Welcome to Weld.com. We have a lot of requests. Uh, I believe a viewer wanted to see a, 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 a Dual Shield 70 T1 wire. And I want to run this a, a couple of ways. I remember running this about 20 years ago. The wire calls for a C25 gas, 75% argon, 25% CO2. And we ran a lot of that. Uh, one day we got to goofing around and we ran a, a 70 series wire, 70 dual shield wire, and we hooked it up to pure argon. And at C25, you notice a little bit of smoke and you'll see the normal silicone deposits on the bead. And amazingly enough, when we ran it on pure argon, there wasn't any smoke, very, very little, and the bead was a lot cleaner. And we had to turn our amperage up quite a bit. We had to turn our wire feed speed up, but we ran that a lot that way. Good metal deposition, good fusion. Uh, we adjusted our certs accordingly, obviously. I believe the wire manufacturer had suggested C25, but I want to do it kind of as an experiment. Also, um, I've had a request from a gentleman, I believe he's going to school in Minnesota, and he wrote me directly. Uh, I believe he wants to see a, um, a self-shielded wire uh, run uphill. I, I want to get to that. I don't have the, one of those wires available to me right now. I do want to shoot that video. I have run some of that wire, and it, it's pretty cool. It, it'll fill up some big gaps, and it'll make some good fillet welds uphill, iron worker type stuff, so I want to get to that. Uh, I want to get my gear on, and uh, I want to run a fillet weld. I want to play around here and do some experimenting so I can answer this specific question to the viewer. Again, I want to run, I'm going to be running 035. I have 3 16 material. I, you know, I could go up with the same parameters and go up to 3 8 and half inch, stack multiple beads, but I just want to do some um, parameter checks here and get this thing smoothed out and run a nice fillet weld. I may run multiple passes to show building up uh, a larger fillet weld. And then I want to switch gas and see if this particular wire will run on the pure argon like I used to. Uh, I do it quite a bit, uh, quite a bit cleaner. Again, I, I did this like 20 years ago and I haven't run very much of it since. So it'll be a good experiment for myself as well. Let me get my gear on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm getting ready to make this weld. I, on my wire angle, I kind of want to go straight in. I may lean it forward. Uh, Y'all know me by now, I do a little TikTok thing. That's just my movement. I don't know, I, you know, I could probably get this profile. Either way, they're gonna be acceptable profiles, whether I lean this forward 10 degrees, five degrees, or back five to 10 degrees. I think they're gonna be pretty close to the same. Uh, if we see this on the other camera, you'll, you'll uh, you know, this is real close to spray, but technically it's still a globular transfer. The wire, as you look at the very end of it, what I see is the wire just turns into a needle. Okay, this is 035 wire, it's a 70 uh, tubular wire, flux core wire. I'm running 25 and a half volts and I'm running 400 on my wire feed speed. So as you hear this, uh, it may sound like a real tight, crispy crackle and that's, uh, there's a lot of energy going on. It's real close to spray. It looks like it, but technically it's still a globular transfer. My weld doesn't need to be very big. Again, I'm on 3 sixteenths. Uh, I may run a, a multiple pass weld just to show how to blend them and then I tend to switch gas and compare this and see if it'll run on argon. Let's go. Okay, uh, as we talked before, and I didn't notice a whole lot of the smoke and fume, uh, you probably could see it better on the camera than I could in my hood. So we've got a little bit of deposit on here and that's to be expected. That's very normal. The oxidizers in the wire, I, I haven't, I didn't even clean the mill scale off the steel because typically 
you know, we wouldn't. We would take the time. Yeah, it's nice to do that. It probably would have run a lot quieter had I cleaned all the mill scale off and buffed it down to to uh, pure white metal. Again, I'm trying to simulate stuff that, you know, if we're just putting stuff together and and not, uh, you know, it's it's fine the way it is. You know, granted, there are some benefits to taking all the mill scale off, but I'm just kind of doing the same that, thing that we would do in normal shop settings. Basically, we would think that that's clean steel, although technically it does have the mill scale on there. Another thing I want to point out, some of you may notice this block back here. I'm not using it as a heat sink. It's the fact that our tab and slot table is so nice and smooth that sometimes I'll get to welding and I can easily move this part and I didn't want that to happen like I'd hit it with the wire starting out. So I want to cool this off and I want to buff it off with a, a wire wheel real quick and then uh, I'll be right back. Hang on. I finished this weld. Um, I went and cooled it off and I buffed it off. It had some uh, silicone, the glass deposits, the dark brown, and that's, that's normal. I do have uh, a little spatter and I figured that that was gonna happen anyway. Um, bead profile is very acceptable. It's got good sharp toe. It wetted into the parent metal nicely. Um, pretty consistent down through there as far as size. I know it drove into the, the confluence of the fillet well because I was able to see that standing over the top of it. Off camera, I, I went ahead and ran two more beads, all of them that you can see. Uh, I ran the original fillet weld. I ran one down and one up. Um, probably should have cooled this off a little bit because it was getting saturated with heat. Again, acceptable profile. I noticed quite a bit of spatter up here on the top toe of the weld. I don't particularly care for that. I could play around with the uh, parameters here a little bit and see if I can knock that out, maybe up one more volt. Again, this is the first time I've run this particular wire since it came out on the market, so I'm kind of experimenting learning myself. So, um, Again, that's a good exercise. I appreciate the viewer question about running the, uh, the 70 instead of the 71. I believe we did some, some demonstrations where we ran the uh, Dual Shield 7100 that produces the flux. We ran it uphill. Uh, I think we even did an overhead, and I, don't, I wasn't real smooth with that one because, again, it's been 20 years since I've done a lot of overhead spray which is what we were trying to get to was the more of the spray hot fluid type to prove that we could do it overhead. Um, anyway, let me, you know, now at this point, I want to, I want to change gas. I just want to switch over from C25 and I want to run straight argon and I'm curious to see what this does on this particular wire. It may run beautifully, it may tank, I don't know, but, but I want to find out because I do remember uh, using this in industry. So give me just a little bit and I'll change gases and I'll redo this whole demonstration on, on this uh, 70T wire. Be right back. I have, I have changed this uh, uh, tubular wire, the 70C wire, over to pure argon. A minute ago we ran a fillet weld. Uh, we're going to compare the two of them, but we ran a fillet weld. I believe our settings were 25 volts, 400 on the wire feed speed. I left the original voltage alone. I'm welding exactly the same. Uh, I did not clean the mill scale off of here. And to just to preset this, I am now running at 550 inches a minute, and it runs basically the same. It seems like it has a little bit longer arc. Again, I might be able to go 575, even push 600 inches a minute. So the, the whole thing about this is it's still a stable arc, okay? If I was to take hard wire MIG, solid wire MIG, uh, ER70S6 and run it with pure argon in a spray mode up this high, I wouldn't get a good result. It, the weld pool would be unstable, it tend to undercut. Okay, so uh, again, tubular dual shield wire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the trigger here and just do a fillet weld to start with.
excuse me, I am going to turn the wire up. This is welding just fine, but I noticed that it's just a long arc. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and push this wire as hard as I can here and try to shorten up this arc just a little bit. It's welding fine, but I think I can go faster. And I'm going to start the weld back over here on this corner, keep the same angle and come back toward myself. Two things to note here. I don't know, again, I couldn't see it under the hood. Hopefully you saw that there was there maybe a lot less fume, a lot less smoke. One thing that you should notice right away is that there's hardly any glass deposit on this. I don't, I don't see any, uh, except for right down here on the toe of the weld. I noticed very little, if I had my point, I can point this out, I see a little bit along here. Uh, I see good mechanics, good ripple pattern, it's smooth. I know that it burned in there. I see slight undercut along this bottom side here. Again, I was pulling the wire back toward myself, more concentrating on just keeping things the same width. You know, some of that may have been mill scale. Maybe we should have taken that off lightly with a grinder. Um, you know, I ended up down here with 600 inches a minute this was 550 and it, I felt like it had too long of an arc. So, you know, do I go up in voltage to 26 and a half and run 750? I don't know, I probably could get away with it. Or I could drop the volts back maybe. Again, I see this as an acceptable weld. I, I think I'll play around with parameters for just a second off camera and I'll do the same thing I did on the other one and just run a quick triple pass weld and, and see what we get. So uh, I'll be right back. I ran this weld with the, uh, with the Argon, pure Argon. I think I was running about 35 cubic feet per hour. I ran this side, a straight fillet weld, still a little warm. Doesn't take me long to figure out that it's warm either. Uh, I ran this at 25 and a half volts, 400 on the wire feed speed. Came out real clean. I, I, I told you at the beginning of this, I remember doing this a lot. And I don't know if you noticed or not, if it, if it came out with less fumes, but one thing we did notice right away, it didn't have a bunch of deposits over here. I really didn't even need to clean it off. I, I buffed it off. Um, and then off camera, I tried to quickly, I, I did adjust my parameters some. Um, I ran a three pass weld and I'll tell you where I ended up. I ended up at 26 volts. I actually run one of them at 26 and a half, 680 inches a minute, 035, uh, 70T on the dual shield. They both ran in there nice and straight. They both ran in clean. Now, one thing I did notice myself doing is I crawled way up here. I've got this little bump ridge in here where they didn't quite blend together. Um, you know, that's my bad. It's not a bad weld. I just don't like, I like things to be blended in nicely. To me, I think the profile would be okay. Somebody will probably ding me pretty bad on it, but looking over the top of it and maybe looking down through the end of it, profile wise, you know, it's, it, it's okay. I did notice one other thing, and I'd have to uh, experiment with probably knocking this mill scale off. I do notice a little bit of undercut along the toe, bottom toe of the weld. What's odd is it didn't do it on the top. I would expect to see it on the top more than I would the bottom. Uh, maybe I need to drop the voltage back somewhat or get a better gun angle. So I'd have to play around with it a little bit. The whole, the whole demonstration was, you know, will, will the, a flux core wire run on those two gases? Will it even run on straight CO2? Sure. You know, are they all going to run different? Sure. It's the nature and chemistry of the gas. It's the, it's the ionization potential of what you're getting out of these gas blends. So I hope this helped and I hope this answered the viewer question about running on, uh, running the, uh, the uh, dual shield 70 series wire. 
Uh, I'm Bob Moffitt with Weld.com. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos that come out every Monday. Thank you.